Hello, I'm Yuri Dukovny. And I'm Lior Polak, AWS Solutions Architects. In this video, we'll demonstrate how you can configure Access Federation between AWS Identity and Access Management on your individual AWS accounts and Azure AD. And how you can use your existing Azure AD credentials to sign into your AWS accounts and services. We're starting from Azure Active Directory. I already have some users and groups created here. The next thing to do is to create an enterprise application. I already have two accounts that I've set up in advance, and now I need to create the third one. I'm going to select new application, and I'm going to search the uh, gallery for the AWS application. Let's give it a meaningful name. The user will see this name on the user's portal when he's going to single sign on to the account, right? Correct, and this is why we have to give a name that the user can identify. Next, let's select set up single sign-on and SAML. I don't want to save the settings yet, and I'm going to edit the basic SAML configuration and modify the identifier. The reason is that we already have two accounts set up and we need to give each and every one of them a different identifier. So because this is the third account that I'm adding, I'm just going to add hashtag three and save this configuration. Okay, the next thing I need to do is to download the Federation Metadata XML file. And I assume we will upload this metadata file later to AWS IAM when we will configure a SAML identity provider. Yes, in fact, we're going to do this just now. So I'm in my AWS account that I want to add to the Federation with IAM, and I'm going to the IAM as a console and to identity providers. I'm going to create a new provider and choose the provider type as SAML. I will give it a meaningful name like Azure AD and upload the metadata file that I just downloaded and just finish the configuration created. Next, I will create two roles and these roles will be used to assign users from Azure AD later on. So I'm going to create a network uh, administrator role and a support user role. And one important thing to remember is that you have to select the type of the trusted entity to be your SAML Federation provider. So I'm going to select SAML 2.0 Federation and use SAML provider as Azure AD. I'm going to allow both programmatic access and AWS Management Console access. And here I'm going to assign some policy to my role. I'm going to use the job function manage policy type. And we are choosing AWS Manage Policies for this demo. Also, customers may always create their own policies and customize permissions with the full power of AWS AM. Correct. I'm using the AWS job function policies because it's the easiest way to start. It gives you same defaults and you can customize them later. I'm going to skip tag creation and give the role a name like a support user role and create it. Next, I'll create another role with the same configuration. So SAML 2.0 Federation, same provider, same settings, just with a different name and policy. Here, I'm going to use the network admin policy. And create. The next thing we need to do is to create a user that will give to Azure AD so it can pull the roles and then assign them to our users. And this will be the read-only user, correct? Yes. We'll start by creating the policy. Let's see how we do this to minimize the access that this user will have. So I'm going to select the service as I am and the action to be just list roles. This will be the only action that will be permitted for this user. Let's review it and give it a name, like list roles, and create the policy. Now let's create the user and assign the policy. I'm going to choose access type as programmatic access. And I'm going to attach the policy that I've just created. Now let's see how we set up provisioning in the Azure ID side. So I'm heading back to Azure and selecting provisioning menu item. And I'm going to change the mode of provisioning from manual to automatic. 
Next, I will have to put in uh, my user credentials in this uh, dialog. So I'm heading back to AWS. I'll copy the access key ID and put it in the client secret box. Then I'm going to use my secret access key from AWS and put it in the secret token box in Azure. And there is a little bit different terminology here between AWS, IEM, and Azure AD. Yes, this is something to remember. Next, I'm going to test my connection. And then I can click Save. Now, once that's set up, we can go ahead and enable provisioning. I'll click on and save the configuration again. Now my provisioning has started and I'll refresh to see if it finished already. So I can see that I got two roles synchronized from AWS and my initial sync was completed. Now, one thing to remember is that the initial sync is, is taking place almost immediately, but follow-up sync will be done on intervals of 40 minutes. So every change you make in AWS will only be synced here once every 40 minutes. So while the roles may appear in here, it may take a little while until they show and be available for assignment in the users and group menu. Let's head over there and add a new group assignment. I'm going to take uh, the groups that, that I already created. Let's take support users and assign the support user role that we just synced from AWS. I'm clicking assign and I'm going to repeat this also for the network admin group. And we can assign more than one AWS role to the users and groups in Azure AD. Yes, of course. Let's do that so we can see how it looks like later on. I'm going to the group selection again. I'm going to pick up the support users group and I'm going to assign this group with the network admin role as well. I'm going to click assign. Okay. So when this assignment completed, let's look at the user's experience. Let's open a new browser session and see how user signs in. Okay. So I'm going to show you the IDP initiated flow and I'm going to go to myapps.microsoft.com. Signing in with one of my users. And we're going to type in the password. I don't want to stay signed in. And we can see the Azure AD portal with the applications and AWS accounts assigned to the user. Right. And as you can see, this user already has assignments for AWS Project A Dev and Project A Prod from previous assignments. And now they also have the new Project B production account. Let's click it. So because we assigned two roles for this user group, now we get prompt by AWS role selection menu to choose which role we want to sign in with. I'm going to select the support user role and click sign in. As you can see, we are signing to this account with a support user role with the identity from our IDP, which is Jay Jenkins. We had to go through a number of steps here and administrator has to do this for each and every new account and to keep managing changes for the account access in both places, AWS and Azure AD. This probably can be automated, correct? Yes, customers may automate provisioning of new accounts, but managing this configuration and changes may not be the easiest task here. Thank you for watching us today. It were Yuri Dukovny and Leon Pollack with AWS. You can also watch our webinar, How to Use Azure Active Directory with AWS SSO for more details.